As he was leaving, Van Diathevan approached Alwarkadian and said, What is this, the prince is doing this? That day he suddenly started a fight with fists, today he started a knife fight. Shouldn't we start the fight after saying that? It seems that the prince's friendship is very dangerous. He said. Hearing this, the prince came to their side. Yes, sir. My friendship is very dangerous. Did you know that last night? You must be at least ten years from where I am to be safe. Said. That's not what I said, prince. I'm willing to take any risk on their part. But for you to be so sudden. Now Vera Vaishnava interrupted and said, Don't you know this, brother? The prince used this trick to know who the opponents were and to act accordingly. Whoever they are, if they see a knife fight, won't they stop and watch? The prince said, Thirumalai is right. There is one peculiarity of my horoscope. If someone befriends me, they will surely develop resentment and enmity. For that reason, if I want someone's friendship, I often fight with them. Only those who do not care about this can be my friends. Said. Very well, then. I will not wait for you to begin the fight any longer, and I will start it myself. Prince. I forgot to tell you something important when I brought you news. I want to tell it now. It must be said. If you don't want to hear it, pick up the knife again. Van the Van said. No. Tell me the news, I hear. Didn't you even say that in the crowd around us there was a woman standing with a luscious hyacinth in her hand? Who was that woman? I don't know, I haven't seen her very well. I'm not in the habit of seeing her. Prince. She was the one who sent them a message, I failed to tell them. How to say it, it was right to fight with them from meeting them, and to escape the house falling on their heads. So there was no proper opportunity to tell it. Suddenly, when I saw the girl, I remembered that she had not told me the message. Then a little I was surprised. You saw that time and knocked my knife. Come on, who is that woman? Why should she send me a message? Sir. She is the flower girl. Nice name. But I've never heard of it. Sir. Do you remember the name Samadra Kumari? Samadra Kumari, Samadra Kumari, I don't remember a name like that. I don't even remember seeing her. Please remember a little. If you don't remember, the girl's chest will break. You were about to get into the boat to join us at Cody Kerry. Just then a girl left the boat alone and came ashore from the sea. You watched in amazement. She and you all came close to where you stood to find out who it was. She came. Who is this girl? You asked the lighthouse keeper. He said, she is my Kumari. You said. That woman is remembering it without forgetting. It was with the help of that woman that I was able to cross the sea and come to Sri Lanka. After you told me, I also remember a little bit. But what was Kadakare Samadra Kumari doing here in Anuradhapura recently? Why did she come with these people? Maybe she was looking for you. No, there will never be a day like that. There's no reason to come looking for me. If you've come looking for someone, it must be looking for yourself. I don't know why. While saying this, Vandiyathevan saw Pungazalai who was coming at the side of Sinadipati from some distance away. She walked with her head down. Yet he realized that her attention and opinion were all on the prince. He also knew that once in a while her eyes were on the prince. She must have known instinctively that they were talking about her at that time. Otherwise, there is no need for her to walk with her bowed head upright. Mama! Aren't her eyes boring without looking at the direction for a moment? They reached a roofless hall where only carved black stone pillars stood. The overgrown trees around provided some shade to the hall. There was also a raised pedestal in the middle of the hall. There they went and sat down the prince, the general, and Parthibendra. Vandiyathevan and all Workadians stood a little apart. On the other side, Punghuali was standing under a pillar. From there she could see prince and Vandiyadeva. 
Around the roofless hall the soldiers stood in two rows as if strategizing. Horses and an elephant were stationed at a little distance. Prince Parthipendra looked at him and said, What message have my Tamayanar and Patanar sent? I am anxious to hear. Said. Prince. The Chola kingdom is in great peril. They know this. Yes, sir. The emperor has been ill for a long time. With their help and the support of Sanyam, the conspiracy of the traitors can be shattered in an instant. But don't give too much time to the enemies. The plot of traitors should be nipped in the bud. In view of such a situation, their cousins and fathers have sent me to bring them to Kanchi immediately. At this time, their father thinks that you two brothers should not be separated and it is very important to be in the same place. Also, I want to tell what is in the heart of their mother. He had no desire to rule the kingdom from one place. He is eager to sail to all the countries beyond the sea and conquer all those countries and fly the Chola Tiger flag. His war craze has increased tenfold ever since the Red Army stopped the northern invasion. Therefore, when they arrived at Kanchi, they invaded Tanjore, killed all the conspirators, installed themselves on the Chola throne, and crowned themselves. The prince, who had been listening attentively and respectfully all this time, now covered his ears with his hands and said, No. Do not speak such perverse words. Far be it from me or the Chola throne. Said. If they don't like it, I don't say it, it's their Tamayaner's wish, their own wish. You brothers should discuss and settle. But it is necessary for both of you to unite in eliminating the conspirators. You should immediately leave for Kanchi. We will destroy the poachers and Sambuvaris from Punto to Punto. We will send Madhuranthagan, the disguised Shiva devotee, to Shivaloka. Then think for yourself and your relatives and decide as you see fit, said Parthipendra. Sir! Is it all for us to decide? Shouldn't we know what my father, the emperor, wants? Perhaps you do? Did my father-in-law receive any private message from his father? Prince. On this occasion it is necessary to tell the truth. There is no use in concealing it. It is impossible to know their father's will at this time. The emperor is no longer a free man. He is in the prison of the vassals. No one can see or speak to the emperor without their permission. How can we know his will? Let the father come to Kanchi. Their lord Peru tried to tell. He built a golden palace at Kanchi. He sent an invitation to the emperor to visit and do Grahaprave Sam. But there was no reply from the emperor. Did you know that my father was ill and unable to walk? Prince. Shall their father the emperor of the three worlds come on foot to Kanji? Are there not elephants and horses? Are there no chariots? Are there no chariots of gold and garlands of pearls? Will not a thousand and ten thousand crowned princes come vying to carry him on their heads? That is the reason, the treachery of the followers. The Tanjore Palace has now become the Emperor's prison. O oh Prince! If you want to save your father's life, leave at once. It was clear that these words stirred the Prince's heart. His weeded face showed the first hint of worry. The Prince was deep in thought for a while and looked up at the face of the General. Commander! What is your idea? A few days ago the Prime Minister, Aniruthap Brahmarayar, came. He is a man of my father's respect and intimate admiration. He suggested that I should remain in Ceylon for some time. You also approved it. There is no fighting here, why should I stay? You said peace to me. The First Minister has sent the same idea back to the Vyashnavars standing here. They know how much I value my brother Ilya Prati. I will not cross the line he has set. I have been telling him to come to Sri Lanka. Young Prati has sent a straw to this warrior of the Vinar clan. In a way, my sister's message was also similar to what Parthipendra said. But he has written to leave immediately and come to Padayare. My cousin has sent him to come to Kanchi. General. What is their opinion? He said. Prince. Until this morning, I was of the opinion that you should stay on this island of Sri Lanka. Even last night, 
I was discussing with him for a long time. He argued for a long time and I did not agree. But, early this morning, there you are, the woman came and told me a message. Hearing that, I changed my opinion. Now it seems to me that you must go to Kanji at once, said the Sri Lankan commander. The prince fixed his gaze on Funga Jalai, who was standing in the shade of a pillar and watching him with a watchful eye. I have heard that Abhimanyu has been attacked and killed by enemies on all sides. It seems that news from all four sides will attack and kill me. Said the prince. What message has that woman brought? Said. Let her tell it. Said Periya Velar. Bungazalai walked hesitantly. She stood in front of the prince. She looked around. She saw the general and saw Parthibendra. She saw Vandiyathevan and Alvarkadian standing at a distance. She could not look up but the prince's face. Woman say, quick! said the commander. Punghuali tried to say something. But no words came. Aha! This world seems to have become dumb, said Arulmas Hivarmar. That's all Punghuali raised her eyebrows and looked at the prince once and for a moment. By then, Tears began to flow from her eyes. She immediately ran from there. She ran away and hid among the thick trees. Everyone looked at it in amazement. Vandiyathevan came forward and said, Sir. She ran like this last time. I will keep going and catch her. He said. Do so. But let the captain tell what message she brought. Said the prince. The commander replied. Let's say it in two words. Prince. The Palyavatarayas have sent two big ships and a lot of warriors to bring them captive. The ships entered the channel of Thondaman River and stopped in a hidden place. Said. 